Verse 7 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Mercy is extending forgiveness and passion towards someone in whom it is one's power to punish. It's essentially not giving someone what they deserve, which is punishment. And those who are merciful are merciful because they have received the mercy of God. We're not merciful in order to receive mercy. No, we're merciful because we have received mercy. And those who are merciful, who are forgiving towards others, show that they have comprehended, that they have experienced and they understand the mercy of God. And it is from this mercy that our mercy flows out to others and forgives them, even when they have wronged us in the harshest of ways, because we understand that the way that we have sinned against God cannot even be compared to the to this way that sin people have the way that people have sinned against us. The way people have sinned against us is so small, and when we have been forgiven much, we're going to pour out that mercy towards others. And the merciful will receive mercy because they will be in right relationship with God. The Bible says that if you don't forgive your brother of his sins, neither will God forgive you of yours. And when you forgive others and you're operating from that place naturally because you've been forgiven, you can enter into and continue to enter into the inexhaustible storehouses of the riches of God's mercy. Praise God. I think of the parable of the unforgiving servant in Matthew 18, 21 to 35. Where essentially there is a man who owes his master money. He cannot pay it. Yet he falls on his feet. He falls on his knees and he pleads with him. He says, "Forgive." He says, be merciful to me. Be merciful to me. I will try to pay it back. And the master is merciful to him. Yet this servant goes off and his servant comes to him and owes him a much smaller amount. He falls on his feet and he, 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 on his knees and he says, forgive me, forgive me, be merciful to me. Um, I, I, will, I will pay back every last cent. But this servant who has just been forgiven says to him, no, I will throw you in jail until you have paid me back every last cent. When the master hears about this, he throws his servant into jail because he forgave such a debt. Yet this man couldn't forgive someone else. And this parable shows that the only reasonable response to the forgiveness of God is that we would forgive others and show them mercy. We, when we don't show other people mercy, we show that we don't recognize how much we've been forgiven. As simple as that. We also see in the, in the example in, in Luke 7, 47, where Jesus goes to, have, uh, to dine with uh, Simon the Pharisee and the sinful woman is at his feet, washing his feet with her tears. And, and, and with oil and uh, perfume and, and, and Jesus and Simon is thinking in his mind, Jesus doesn't know who this woman is. Otherwise, he wouldn't allow her to be here. Jesus perceives this and he says to Simon, he says, ever since I got here, this woman hasn't stopped washing my feet with her hair, with her tears. And, and she loves much because she's been forgiven much. And what that is saying is that when one recognizes that one has been forgiven, the natural response is that they will, will pour out that love and mercy to others. And the source of God's mercy is his very love for us. That's why he extends his mercy to us. We see in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Verse 17, For God did not send his Son in the world to condemn the world, but so that the world would be saved through him. Romans 5, 8, See, now this is, now this, God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And when we have received this abundance of mercy, the only natural response is to pour this out to others. And in turn, we continue to receive the mercy of God. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy.